back to Bites of Pie. Today we're going to cover the Lab 6E Kickstarter, a shopping cart. We got a lot to cover and a little time to do it, so let's go quickly. So essentially this, uh, this lab has three classes. It has the Item 6E class, it has a Shopping Cart class, and it has a sh Going Shopping class. Now, this is a perfect example of encapsulation where we have Item 6E, which is, uh, essentially denotes an item in your shopping cart. Think about going grocery shopping and you're going to go purchase items. Now I can have an apple, you know, say for example, I have the name, so an item would be like say, an apple has a price of say like 50 cents an apple and I buy five apples. So the item 6E will have the name, price, and quantity. The name would be apple, the price would be 50 cents, and the quantity would be five or six, you know, I'd say buy six apples. Uh, same thing like, say, uh, uh, gallons of milk. Say I buy a gallon, of, name would be gallon of milk, price would be, may say, say three fifty, and I want to buy two gallons of milk. I know I really like milk for some reason. So in a shopping cart that you would go grocery shopping with, you'd have different items in your, in your cart, and you'd have different quantities of that item. So that's what the item 6E is encapsulating, is every item in the list. And your shopping cart will essentially be an array of these items. So as you add more items, we're going to be adding to the, the list. Now, one thing you note is that array. We're going to be using. We're not going to be using the array list class. We're going to be using a regular array. So, because we're using a regular array, we're going to have a static. We can only. Uh, it does not grow statically. Once you create an array, it'll be set. This thing, this shopping cart, we want to keep adding to the items, even if we go beyond our list. Note that we're going to start off by creating an array of five items, but if I want to add another item and I've reached my limit, I want to increase the shopping cart by three spaces. So there's a function called increase size, which will allow us to, if I reach five, the limit of five, I'll add three more spaces to my cart. And I'll, I'll need to intelligently sense that my cart is filled up. And we'll kind of cover that, but you'll need to fill in the gaps. So let's start off uh, by, and I've highlighted these, you won't see this in your lab, this is just to help me focus on what I need to cover in this Kickstarter. First off, we'll do the easiest part. We're going to, well, let's take a look at item. Again, we have a name, price, and quantity. The constructor, you pass in the name, the price of the item, and how many of that item you purchased, and it stores it off. And it are, also has all the getters and setters, and of course, a formatted two string. So you don't have to do that work. It's already done for you. You don't need to turn the item 6E in. <clears throat> Let's start off by uh, implementing the shopping cart. The first thing should be fairly easy. I want to create an instance of a uh, instance variable cart. So I'm going to create a an array of 6E items. So notice how the notice the syntax. Uh, I say the item 6E class open and close square brackets and the variable cart. So now I've created an array, uh, a, a, an actual shopping cart. Now I'm going, uh, the next thing it's asked me is to instantiate the array in my constructor, instantiate cart to have five, item, five objects. So let me go to my constructor. Here's my constructor and I want to initialize my cart array here to five. So that's fairly easy. Again, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just copy paste my cart equals a new item 6e with five items in it okay so that's this is syntax a new item 6e array with five items in it and I've initialized my array the next one I'm going to I want to implement the increase size so if I was to have a shopping cart if you notice in the in the sample output, I've gone way beyond just five items. You can see here I have one, two, three, four, five, six items. So if I if I put more than five items, I'll hit an out of bound array out of bounds and it'll fail. So I need to implement this function called increase size. And I'm going to help you step through that and give you some items. We're not going. We're going to do it the easy way. Essentially, what we're, do, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new array on the fly with uh, three more items in the previous array. So first off, let's create a holder variable and set it to cart. So our cart initially, say, is five items. I'm going to have a variable, well, not item group, item. I'm going to put hold cart and set it to point. Again, we're using... Uh, 
references, because they're, remember an array is an object, I'm going to have hold cart point to the same same cart as what cart is pointing to. Okay, so there, I have two variables point to the same cart. Now I'm going to set, I'm going to add something to my cart. I'm going to create a new array on cart. I'm going to set cart equal to a new item 6e cart, but I want to make it three more. I want to make this cart three more than the previous cart. Well, that's fairly simple. So this is still pointing, this hold cart variable is still pointing to the old hold cart. So I want to set it to that plus, well, let's get the length of that. So we get the length variable. So the old cart, whatever that length, however many the old length is, and I want to add three more items to it. So now I've created a new array. So I had my old array. I have cart now pointing to my new array that's three more than the old array. And now I want to loop through that, or I want to loop through the old array and pass it to the new array, right? So I'm going to say int i, uh, int i count equals zero, i count less than hold cart length. So the old, I'm going to say while the index is less than, the le oh, not comma, index is less than the length, I count plus plus. And now I want to set the value in cart. So we're not done yet. All we did is we just created a new array that's empty, right? And we need, now we need to pass the old, the hold cart items into the cart items. So cart I count, I need a copy, and I'm going to leave this for you to fill in. So in the new cart, I need to pass the old cart item. Copy that back in. So I'll let you fill in that blank. Okay? Next item, add item to the cart. So now I've got this function called add add to cart. So the first thing I want to do, I want to do all these different things. I, I'm going to, if I'm going to add a new item to the cart, I'm basically, I have a function that will pass in an item name, a price, and a quantity. I first want to check the size of my cart to see if I'm maxed out. If I'm maxed out, I want to call the increased item. Uh, the in, I'm sorry, the increased size. So the section I want to do is something like this. So if the cart is maxed out, I want to increase the size, plus three more, right? I'm going to let you fill this in, this question marks. So how would I test if cart has maxed its length? Now remember, I've got item count, which tells me how many items are in my cart. So you're going to be need to, you need to use these two variables. So I need to make I need to say when this the length of this cart has reached this item count, I know I've maxed out and I need to increase my size. All right. Now, <clears throat> if I've gotten past this and I've increased my size, I know that at this point I'll have at least one I have at least one spot open to add a new item. So, I'll need to add to my cart at section at I at, at the item count level. So, I'm at the next item, so I know that these item count holds how many items I have in my cart. I want to add at that next line, I want to add a new item, new item 6e. And I'll let you fill I'll let you fill in what do you think should go here. Now again, notice these variables up here. I'm probably going to want to pass this into my new item and add it to the cart. Okay? I need to update the total cost. So total cost now, the total cost is essentially the price and the item, price and the quantity of items. So I want to add the total, let me go back to here. So total cost already has some sort of value. I've already added up all the items that have come before me. I'm going to need to use something. Now, I'm going to need to use something to add. If I'm adding this new item, I'm going to need to add the new total cost to the shopping cart. Now, note, 
in the, this highlighted area, the variable takes into account both the price and the quantity of items. So if I'm adding a new item, say app, five apples at 50 cents a piece, I'm going to want to make sure that five times, if, if, it's, if it's five items at 50 cents a piece, I want to make sure it's five times 50 is 250, and I want to add 250 to the total cost. Lastly, I want to make sure that I update item count. I want to update, I want to increment item count to, a new, that, to show that I've added a new item to the shopping cart. And I'll let you do that there. So again, and there's, there's faster ways to do some of these things. You can combine some of these two. If you're creative, I'll let you do that. So this, uh, let's go to the next one, item. We, once we do that, we should be able to compile our class and compile it. Uh, lastly, I'm going to go over the runner class. So we've built our shopping cart that should be able to take in new items, uh, automatic, dynamically increase the items. And now I want to <clears throat> update. Uh, now I want to run this class so that the sh sample output looks like this. Now I want to notice I'm going to be inputting a lot of items, so I'm going to be needing a scanner class. And note, if I, I not only do I need to add a new scanner, but I also need to do an import of Java Util Scanner, right? So this is just getting you in the practice of when you add a new scanner, import the new scanner item. Now, notice I keep I'm I can tell by the output that I'm going to keep looping, and I'm going to use this. This is kind of like my keep going variable. While I enter in one, I want to keep shopping. So here's a really quick way of creating a creating one of those keep going loops. I'm just going to create a so again I copied enter one to keep shopping or zero to quit. String keep going equals next line. And then while keep going is equal to one. Now I'm gonna copy this again and put that down. I want to put that at the bottom of my loop so that There we go. I want to put this at the bottom of my loop so that I can keep it'll keep going through this loop. It won't it won't ever hit this line again, so I want to kind of do what I did up here. I want to repeat that down here. So the first time I get into the loop, I keep looping and keep going gets changed and I keep evaluating, keep going at the top of the loop. All right. So this is a good practice to have, especially when you have a loop to do the to build that structure first before I build in the meat. All right, and now what I want to do is I want to keep I want to keep prompting the user for the name, the price, and the quantity of the items. So I'll just say I probably want to create uh, let's say string string name equals scan dot next line, and I probably want to system out print line. Copy and paste is your friend. So into the name of the item. Okay. And I want to, so a name, price, and quantity. Enter the name of the item. Enter the price of the item. Enter the quantity of the item. And now I'm not, I'm going to be entering not strings, let's do just for giggles, price and quantity, but I don't want strings. I want, for the price, I probably need to double. Next, double. And for quantity, I, d I need an integer. Next, int. Okay, now again, Here's a hint. I won't. Here's a hint. I'm going to put a scan next line because if you don't do this, it'll flip out here automatically. Um, there's another elegant way of doing it. I'm just doing this very simplistically. Last thing I'm going to. So I'm looping through, and I, now that I've got the name, price, and quantity, I'm going to want to add to my shopping cart. So 
I want to add a new item to my shopping. And I'm just going to let you figure that out. How do I add this, these items to my shopping cart? Finally, I want to print out my shopping cart. And that should be pretty simple. I will let you fill that in. Now make sure, again, last, lastly, make sure to always go back to the sample output of the lab and make sure it fits it. This is actually going to help you it could, because it has six items. If you enter this in, it should you should get an output that looks something like this. So always a good idea to validate your code with the sample output. That concludes the Kickstarter for 6E. Thanks for watching.